Hi guys, thank you for joining me. We are going to make this cute design right here. I took three Parker on the Porch designs and merged things in my in Brilliant software to create this file and then I stitched it out. So we are going to be making this together from start to finish and I took um, two mini quilt designs from Parker in the Porch and I took this stuffy design that's coming out tomorrow and I made it on here. So I'm going to show you how to use this file on here and I also put it on a towel. So I'm just showing you how versatile Parker on the Porch designs are and you can merge different things together. So we thought it'd be fun to hack that mini quilt. So you learn how to make a mini quilt, but you also learn how to use um, different designs and merge them within In Brilliance. So please join me and get ready. Okay guys, I have In Brilliance open. I went and opened three of the files that I want to use and I'm going to kind of maneuver around. I'm not going to go into all the details on how to use In Brilliance, but I'm going to show you how to merge some different files to make something that you want to make. So um, let's get started. I have the Happy Thanksgiving mini quilt by Parker on the Porch open. I'm going to make this screen a little bit smaller so I, it fits on my screen. Over here, this toggle will make it bigger or smaller. So you can get into real fine details if you want, or you can pull it so you can see it all on one screen. So I'm going to pull it a little bit smaller. Okay, this is the 8 by 12 file. That's what size I'm going to be making. Now, um, the only thing I want off of this one, this is the main one we're going to use. I actually want all these edges because I like this design where it has the different edges on it. It has all four sides having um, fabric put on it. So I'm going to use this as my main file. I'm going to delete off of this file what I'm not going to use. So I'm not going to use, if you click on this, you can see that all of the stuff opens over here. Let me move this over. All the stuff opens over here, right here. And uh, so these are all the different steps. So you need to find the steps that you don't want to use. Like I'm not going to use these background quilting. I'm going to pull in a different one. So I'm going to click on the thing I don't want. And I'm going to go ahead and push backspace on my keyboard. It might be delete on yours, but mine's backspace. Okay, I'm running a Mac, so mine might be different. Okay, then I don't want the happy. See, I'm clicking on the happy. I'm going to get rid of that. I don't want the thanks. I'm getting rid of that. I don't want the given. I'm getting rid of that. I don't want the pumpkin. I don't want the outline. I don't want the stem. I don't want that. I don't want the leaves, and I don't want the leaves outline. All I want is the base of this, and that's what I have here. So I'm keeping everything else. Now I'm going to bring stuff into this. So I'm going to go over here to this 8x12. This is the Parker on the Porch 8x12 Winter Wonderland um, mini quilt. I want these lines. These were swervy where the other ones were straight on the Thanksgiving one. So I want to find that. So I'm clicking on the lines right here, and it's going to bring me at step 6 right here. I'm going to go to there. I'm going to copy. So I'm just going to do control C, whatever your copy is, and then I'm going to control V and it's going to put it over here. Okay. So now it's just on this one instead of the other one. Okay. Well, it's still over here, but that's all I wanted off of this one. Well, I might actually take these little stars too. Let me see. Let me go back. Okay. Let me get these designs here. Let me delete these penguins because I can't see what I'm looking at. Okay, I'm going to delete those, delete that, delete that. Okay, so these have like little dots and little snowflake things. I might actually bring these snowflakes over. So I'm going to control C and I'm going to bring it over here, control V, and then I'm going to move it. I'm just clicking on the design. I'm moving it up here. It might be cute there. Then I'm going to do control C and control V and copy it. So now there's a second one. And then this circle right here, I'm going to rotate it around. We might keep these. I might get rid of them. I'm just going to put them here for now to see what I like. We'll see. 
Okay, so I have those for now. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead. I'm just thinking, do I want these little dots? There's these little cute dots here too. We'll take them for now and see if we want them. And control C, control V. So you have like these little dots. Maybe put them there. Control C, control V. Pull down some down here. Okay. So maybe I might keep those. We'll see once I bring the other design in. Okay, so what I'm showing you how to do is basically open different files and merge them into one. You're pulling stuff from different places. So there we go. So that's all I wanted off of this design. And the reason I didn't use this one originally is because it just has the one fabric on the bottom. I want the one that has the fabric that's going all the way around. That's why I took the Thanksgiving one. But I like the quilting better on this one for when I'm making, so I pulled the quilting over here, okay? Now the last thing is, is I'm gonna bring in the new design. This is a stuffy. Those other two were Parker on the Porch um, mini quilt. This one is the Parker on the Porch um, tree stuffy, Christmas tree stuffy. So I'm gonna pull this one, but I only want this middle part. This outline is to make the stuffy. I'm not making the stuffy. So I'm gonna click on this design right here. So here's the layers of this design. I'm going to delete what I don't want. So this outline I don't want because that's for the stuffy. This is for the applique. This is applique. This is applique, applique, applique. And I don't want the last stitch, which closes the stuffy. Okay, all I want this, and I'm basically going to use this as an applique over there. So I'm taking everything else. I'm going to do control C. I'm moving over, and when I say control C, you can do file, copy, file, paste if you want, whatever your copy and paste function is. And then I'm going to do control V, which is paste in mine, and I'm going to paste it right there, okay? Now I'm going to put it where I want it. I feel like I want so you can move this around you click on it and you just move it around and you can rotate I'll show you again how to rotate I'm just trying to figure out exactly where I want it sorry just give me five seconds to make it where I want it it's really I'm just eyeballing over here and over here and what I think looks center and where I want it Okay, so that looks good. Now you can add words here. So I'm going to show you how to add words. So I basically right now I just showed you how to pull different elements from different designs and delete things and move things to make your own your own things. So we're just hacking files right here. We're just merging different things that's already been created. Now I'm going to add some words here. The way you can add words is you go to this A up here and it's gonna bring in words right there. It's right here. Then you come over here down to text, and I'm gonna type, I don't know, what do we want this to say? I don't know, I might not keep anything, but let me show you how to do it. Just say we want, um, I'm trying to think, Mary or Holly Jolly, let's just type Holly just so I can show you how to do it. Holly, let's do Holly. I wanna do, it's gonna be kind of big though. Most wonderful. So I'm gonna do most wonderful. I'm just gonna show you this right here. Okay, so I'm gonna change the font. All the types most wonderful and changes to most wonderful. This is a really small font, so all you see is these big toggles. These little green toggles let you move just the one letter, which I'm not gonna do. So I'm gonna do it. Sorry, I was looking for undo. Let me just go back. That's not it. Do do do. I'm sure there's an undo. I'm trying to figure out where it is. Okay, I don't want to rotate. These are too small. Let me make them big real quick so I can maneuver it because right now it's just selecting one thing. So our M's still way up there. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go back to letters right here and I'm just gonna make this big. So this is your fonts underneath. I have lots of fonts that I bought and brought in and Brilliance comes with some standard fonts that you get just by buying the software. I, um, I've bought a lot of these. When you buy fonts, you just wanna make sure whatever font you're looking at has a BX format. If it has a BX format, then it can pull into in Brilliance and then you can just type the letters out. You can use other fonts that aren't BX, but then you say, for example, you use PES files, then you're gonna to have to bring in each letter. You'll have to bring in like the every single letter versus typing it. So I always look for BX fonts if I'm gonna be using it for this. And let me just go down a little bit and try to pick something cute. I'm probably not even keeping this, but I'm just showing you. Okay, so now we can at least see it and I can move. So you can go up here. We wouldn't want it that big because it would be over our fabric on the edges. Let's see if I can make it smaller. I always try to make it smaller in the font versus pulling it. Okay, so you can... And Brilliance does let you adjust the file a little bit. I will adjust fonts. I rarely adjust like actual designs because it ends up looking kind of wonky. Okay, so there's most wonderful. And then I'm gonna just do Control C, Control V and bring it down here. And then click on it. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go do time of the year. Most wonderful time of the year. Okay, that's still on the fabric. I don't want it on the fabric. So now I'm just adjusting where I want it. Most wonderful. I don't like this being behind that letter. So I'm gonna move this either up so it shows somewhere else, okay? Or move it down, let's see. That looks okay to me. I don't like it under the words, so I'm trying to move it like somewhere different. I'm okay if it's right there. Yeah. Sorry. I'm designing while I show you how to do it. <laughs> Okay, it doesn't matter that it's right here because this is an applique. It'll be over it. You won't even see it. But um, there you go. I could go into further de detail, but you have to have like a different stitch artist to go and get rid of that one little thing. I don't design, so I'm just showing you how to merge things just with the basic and brilliance. And this is how you do it. Okay, so I showed you. Let's recap a little bit. I showed you how to bring... Um, one file and I showed you how to delete things. I showed you how to put things from one file into another file. I showed you how to add words. So this is what we're going to go with. Now I'm going to show you how to stitch this out, but um, we've merged everything we wanted. And so I'm going to go ahead and go file, save stitch file as, and I'm going to go ahead and save it the way I need to save it. I'm going to have to save it as like a PES document and then I have to bring it over to my machine. So go ahead and do that and then I will meet you over at the machine and I'll show you how we stitch this out. Okay guys, I'm on my machine. I have the file loaded that we just made. I am running a baby lock meridian. I have my hoop with one sheet of cutaway. We're going to have to jump around since we made this design ourselves, and the steps aren't necessarily in order. So if you bought any of the mini quilts, the order will be the correct order. Our order is going to be off because we move things around. So I'm just going to show you how to do it here. But um, that's what you do when you hack stuff. So this is the very first step. We're going to go ahead and do this one. It's going to be a placement stitch for our batting and our main fabric that's going to be in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that. And I'll come back and show you. Okay, guys, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and did a placement for what size batting you want. And so I just have batting here. You can use felt sheets. You can use batting. You can use 
um, interfacing. You could use like a fleece interfacing. Um, honestly, you could use whatever you want. This does. This isn't functional. This is like a a pretty decor, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just using some batting because I have it, and then I'm going to go ahead and use this. You want to use whatever you want in the middle, the fabric that's in the middle of your design, and you just want it big enough to go over those same stitch lines. So I'm just going to put it down just like this. I am using. I'm not interfacing this. You have this right here. Um, if I was using woven fabric, I would probably do um, the adhes the fleece that would adhere to your fabric if it was just woven or something instead of this. But this is duck cloth. It's like a canvas or whatever, so it's fairly thick, so I'm not interfacing it or anything. So I'm just putting this down so you can use whatever. So that's all you need. I'm going to go back to the machine. It's going to go ahead and tack this down, and then I will show you what we do next. Okay, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and tacked the fabric down. Now we're going to skip some steps. You could run this next one. Um, it's going to put the placement down for all the edges that we're going to do with fabric, but you're not going to run that yet. You need to run the inside parts. So I'm just going to skip it for now. You can see here I'm going to, and it, if you don't know how to skip on your machine, let me go back real quick. Most of them, they're all a little bit different, but you should all have like a plus and minus with a needle somewhere. You should look for this icon. You go ahead and push that and then it brings up steps and the steps right here, these needles are individual stitches um, and steps. So if you go ahead, um, if you go ahead and do these stitches, this will go backwards one stitch and forward one stitch and minus a thousand stitches plus a thousand stitches. These arrows right here actually skip entire steps. So if I go this, it will go back to the previous step we just stitched. If I go here, it's going to go to that one. We're going to skip this. We're going to come back to this one. You can see how many steps I'm on when I'm on step three of 24. So I'm going to go ahead and skip until I know what I want. This is just placing the fabric down. Um, there's going to be several of these because we do it all the way around. So just bear with me until we get to um, the stitch. We're going to get to the quilting is what we're trying to get to. These are just placing the whole outside fabric. So we'll have to come back to all of these. And the reason we're skipping, this is going to put the little loop on the top. The reason we're skipping all of these is because I deleted all of the design steps. Those design steps would be before these steps, but I deleted all of them on this file and we put our own in. This is to put the back on. So now we're going to get into the design steps that I loaded. Um, if you buy the designs, they are in the right order. Know that we merged multiple designs together, so the steps are not in order when you hack things. So, okay, so we need this step next. So the first step is to go ahead and do your placement, and then you do your tack down of your main inner fabric, and then you go find the design step. So this is the design. I was trying to debate if I want to do it green or if I want to do it like silver. I'm having a hard time deciding. I'm going to go ahead and stitch it. Pick whichever thread you want. It's going to do this pretty quilting on the back. And then I will stitch mine and come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, I went with like a metallic silvery one right here. It's like a metallic silver. And so it went ahead and stitched the quilting there. Now we're going to go ahead and do the next design step that pops up, which is these little snowflake things. I'm going to keep it the same color. I don't want it to be too loud and busy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, that's what it looks like right there. Now we're going to do the next design step, those little dots that we added. I'm going to go ahead and just keep it this silver as well. I know it might make, look good with light blue or something, but... I don't want to do like light blue and reds and greens and stuff. So I'm going to just keep it this silver. I'm going to go ahead and stitch it. I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, that's what the little dots look like right there. Okay, so now we are going on to the next step. And you can see that it's showing this detail right here where it's going to go ahead and stitch. Now, we don't have a placement stitch for this tree. This is pulled as a stuffy and so we're not going to have a placement stitch we're hacking things so we got to improvise so i'm just looking where my needle is going to start up here it's going to start you can see the pinpoint is where the first stitch is going to go which my machine is where it's going to go it's right there i'm going to take whatever you want as your applique fabric where you want your tree 
I'm going to take this vinyl. This is Geo White Geo Vinyl from MyPunkBroidery.com. Super pretty. Love it. I just cut a big enough piece that I know I won't be missing any of it. It's going to be kind of wasteful because it's going to be bigger than it needs to be, but I don't have a placement stitch, so um, I'm going to just make sure I have it in the right spot, and I'm going to start stitching. So I'm going to stitch that detail. It's going to go down. I'll show you where we're going to cut it later. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stitch. I will come back and show you what we do next. Okay, this is what it looks like. It went ahead and stitched that detail right there. Now the next step is doing like the whole satin stitch outline, but before it gets to the satin stitches, it does do uh, outline where we can stop the machine and cut for an applique. So I'm going to leave the camera running. I normally don't because I really don't like um, videos where you have to listen to the stitching, but I'm going to go ahead and do it in this case. So, oh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, so I ran this on a towel first, so let me show you. My office is a mess, so don't look everywhere, but I ran this thing on a towel, and it turned out super cute. So then it gave me the idea to give you a tutorial on how to merge a bunch of different things and how to run it on here. It does do the six stitching first, and then once it gets down to here, then I think it does all the way around like this in one stitch, and that's where I stop the machine. So I'm going to let it run these detailed stitches right here real quick because that's going to take forever for you to watch. See right here on the tree? It's on the inside. It's going to do those satin stitches all the way down right here first. Once it gets past those, then I will turn the camera back on and I'll show how it goes around and where we stop it. But for now, I'm just going to let the machine run and then I'll stop it as it gets down to here and show you what we do. Okay? Okay, it's almost to the edge, so I'm going to start recording now so you can see what it does next. This is all the same step. So that's the inside satin stitch. Now it's going to outline the tree with this zigzag. See how it's doing like one zigzag step around? When it gets down to this bottom, you want to stop the machine because then it's going to start satin stitching and we don't want that. We want to cut this excess off first. So I'm going to watch it really close. And my stop's right here, so I'm just watching this. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there because it did go all the way around. Okay, I'm going to cut. My cut's right here. I stopped with this. I'm cutting here. And I'm going to bring me bring you over to the desk, and I'm going to show you how I cut out the excess before it starts satin stitching. Okay, you can see that it went ahead. It did the inside satin stitching, which is fine because you don't want that cut. But now it's stitched all the way around. It's getting ready to do the satin stitching all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and cut off all this excess fabric. Okay. Now, if this was like a true applique, then it would have a step where it just does the outline and then you cut around it, but it's not. This is a stuffy where making a stuffy be an applique. So I'm just going to cut around here, and I'm not worrying too much if any of these, this is a zigzag stitch. I'm not worrying if I'm cutting some of the edges of it because it, the satin will go over it anyways, so I'm not being super careful about it. I'm just making sure... Your main goal is to get enough of this excess vinyl or fabric, if you're using fabric, off. Um, so when it does the satin, you don't see the fabric or the vinyl on the other side of the satin stitch. That's your goal here. Okay, so I'm just using applique scissors. I don't know if I said that. Okay, so I'm just cutting around here, getting all this excess off. Alright, 
So I'm going to show you what it looks like. So that's what it looks like so far. I just cut all the way around it. So now I'm just going to bring it back to the machine. I'll bring you with and I'll show you. I'm just going to start the machine where it was left off. We stopped it like right here. And I'm just going to hit start. And it's going to just continue the same step it was already doing. And it's just going to do all the satin stitches all the way around here. So I'll bring it back to the machine and show you that. Okay, I'm back on my machine and I'm like right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my foot down and continue the step. I'm not moving anything. It's just gonna continue where I stopped it. And what it's doing is it's gonna do the same satin stitch all the way around the tree. So I'm gonna come back and show you what that looks like when it's done. Okay guys, this is what it looks like when all that satin stitching's all stitched. So we're gonna do the next step in this design, which is the applique placement for these um, area, the garland, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that. It's just the placement, so it doesn't matter what color it is right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch that. I'll come back and show you. Okay, that's what it looks like. There's your placements right there. I'm gonna use this woven fabric right here. I went ahead and ironed it, and then I just put interfacing on the back. This is just medium weight interfacing. Most people, when they do an applique on things, they will use heat and bond light. So you're more than welcome to use heat and bond light. That's like the proper thing to do. But I'm just putting, these are small, and I don't think it necessarily has to stick. I just made my uh, woven fabric a little thicker so it wasn't so flimsy. So you can choose to use whichever you want. I'm going to use this. Now I'm going to go ahead and stitch the next step, which is going to tack it down. Okay, this is what it looks like right here. It went ahead and tacked this fabric down. Now I am just going to take the same applique scissors, and I'm just going to cut all the excess off everywhere. Okay, so this is going to take a minute. I can show you one. I usually leave the camera on while I'm cutting. I'm not sure why, because everyone knows how to cut, but I will just cut out one and then I will stop the camera, okay? To make the video a little shorter. There's a lot of steps in this one. Okay, so that's how you cut out one. I'm just cutting all the way around like that. I'm going to do it for the rest of them, and then I will show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, that's what it looks like right there. So I cut it all close as I could to the stitch lines. Now it's going to go ahead and do the satin stitches all the way around these. I switched my thread to red. I'm going to go ahead and stitch that. I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, this is what it looks like so far. It went ahead and did all the satin stitches and looks great. The next step is gonna do all these little sprinkles. So I changed my thread to green and I'm gonna stitch those and I'll come back and show you. Okay, that's what it looks like right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our next design element and it's the words that we added. I'm gonna do that in my same green and I will come back and show you what it looks okay, like. Okay, stitch the words. This is where we're at. So now the design beeped and said that we're finished because it's at the end of the stuff we added. So now we need to go back to our other steps. So it brought us back to the beginning. We did that one. We did that one. Now this is the one we're going to do. It just shows the extra placements because we're going to put the fabric on the outside of this now. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch that. And it doesn't matter what color. I'm going to stitch that and I'll come back and show you. Okay, guys, this is what it looks like right here. Now we're going to add the sides right here. And this is kind of just a repetitive step. You do it four times. So the first one that happens is over here. You can see it went ahead and did the placement line so you know how big of a piece of fabric you need. I'm gonna use this fabric. This is just woven. I'm not, all I did was iron it. I'm not doing anything. I'm not putting any interfacing or anything on it. I'm just gonna go ahead. And the way you're gonna line it up is on this inside line right here. And then, so you're gonna go just over that line. The next step's gonna go ahead and stitch right here. Then we will fold it over like this, and then it's gonna do another line right here, tacking it down. And we're basically gonna do that step four times. So I'll try to do it um, fast for you. So here's placing the fabric. You're gonna do right sides down, scoot it over to the edge like this, and then it's gonna fold over. So. This is the top. I was trying to think if we had right side fabric. Hold on, let me see if I can get a design that matters. Let me grab something real quick. Okay. 
sorry, my, my fabric doesn't matter which direction it goes because it's just snowflakes. So let me, I didn't think about the direction. You guys might care. Um, let me just take this mousse fabric. I'm just gonna cut this real quick just so I can use it as an example. Okay, so this is the top of our design up here. You can see the words. If you have a directional fabric, you would place it like this, right side down. It would go all the way across the right sizing, of course. You'd place it like this, and then when it turns, it would still be the right direction, okay? Now you can see how big of the fabric that's gonna kinda show, so you can place this exactly where you want it. Say you wanted the moosey's face. So you would pull him right up next to the line, like that, you can see. And then if you, the stitching's gonna be like right about there. So if it's stitched right there, then you'd be able to see this little moosey's face. So that's how you would line it up. And that's also which direction you would do the fabric, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, place my fabric like this. I'm gonna bring it over to the machine. It's gonna stitch one line and then I'll show you what it does next. Okay, this is what it looks like right here. I just went ahead and stitched that line. If you have too much of the fabric, you can just kind of trim it a little bit. Um, you don't have to trim it too close. Um, you don't want it to pull out, but there it is. Now you're gonna go ahead and flip your fabric over like this, smoothing it out. And now you're gonna go back to the machine and you're gonna stitch the next stitch, which is gonna go ahead and tack this down right here. It's gonna stitch one line, tacking it down, okay? So I'm gonna go do that. I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, you can see that it did it. It's now tacked down, so it's gonna show that amount of fabric. Now it's doing this other long side next. So I have another piece done exactly the same way. This time I'm gonna try to get this one in there a little bit. So I'm gonna place it down like that. Sorry, my dog's barking. Um, so I'm trying to get a little bit of this one in there. So I'm gonna place it like that. Make sure you're getting past your stitch lines here and here though. You don't wanna be so concerned about what's showing in that spot to the point where you'd pull it down or anything and then you mess up that. It has to cover all your placements. Okay, so I'm gonna go stitch it right there. I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Run the next step. Okay, this is what it looks like after that step. Now I moved the fabric way over so I could get that specific snowflake. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this excess. I'm not cutting straight up next to the stitch lines. I wanna leave some so they don't pull out. So there is some right there, see? And then I'm gonna smooth it out this way and I'm gonna go run the next step. The next step's gonna stitch down there, tacking this down. So I'm gonna go run that, I'll come back and show you. Okay, this is what we look like so far. Showing you the design, they're both tacked down. Now it's gonna do this top part. I'm gonna flip this around so I can get to it. It's gonna do this part right here, so let me get my little moussey fabric so I can show you. So if you want this to be right, you would do, it needs to be big enough for your placement. So you want it to get past these up here, but you would put face down like this and then you would just pull it over this line. But say we wanted the moose face, I'm gonna pull it over enough right there. Then you're gonna stitch the next step. And then when it flips up, he's gonna be looking at you right there, okay? So you wanna place it that way, okay? Mine's just this snowflake still, so it doesn't matter for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pull it. Where do I want it? Probably right there. I'm gonna just pull it like right there. Make sure I get past all my stitch lines. Pull it this way a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the next step, which is just gonna tack the line down right there. Okay, this is what it looks like right here. I'm gonna cut this excess off. just to get the bulk out of there. Now I'm gonna flip it up and I'm gonna go stitch the next one which is gonna tack the top down, putting this in place. I'll come back and show you. Okay, this is what it looks like. It's all tacked down and looks great, okay? Now we're gonna do the bottom piece. This is the last one for the outside edges. So if you're wanting to place directional fabric correctly, you're gonna put him upside down, right sides, facing down but upside down as well so you and then you can bring it over that top line that you see and then once it stitches that line which is the next step then when you pull it down you can see his little face facing you okay 
So if you have directional fabric, you want to place it like that. Okay, I'm going to take this. Make sure you're past all your placement stitches. I'll go like that. Okay, I'm going to go do the next line. I'll come back and show you. This is where we're at. I'm just going to cut my little bit of excess. I don't have a lot here. I probably could just leave it. Okay, now I'm going to pull it down. Okay, and I'm going to go stitch the next step, which is going to stitch across here. Then I'll come and show you what we do next. We're going to add that top part right there. Okay, you can see the bottom's tacked down. All of its, all the outside edges are done now. So this is what it looks like right there. Okay, now we're going to add this top part, which is going to let you put it on the hanger. We're adding the um, part up here. So I stitched the very next step, which actually, let me put it up here. It just stitches down, over, and up. That's all it did. It's the placement for the piece that we're going to put that's going to let us hang. Now you can do all sorts of stuff here to make it a hanger. You could use ribbon. You could use all sorts of stuff. I'm going to use the fabric. And the way that I prepped the fabric is I went ahead and there you have measurements right here. You can make it longer. The only restriction you have is like here. So you could make it all the way up to the edges right there if you want. You could make it really tiny. It just depends on how wide you like that hanger part. I follow this the placements pretty much closely. I'm pretty close to those. I'm a little bit bigger, but not much. So I cut my fabric. I cut my fabric a little bit bigger because I fold two sides in so I have clean edges and then I fold it down, okay? So you just want clean edges on both sides and then fold it down and then you wanna be about the same size as the placements. It doesn't have to be exact. So the way that you're gonna place this is you're gonna, you have the folded side right here. Let me open it, folded right here, the raw edges right there. And I'm gonna take the part that you wanna see fold up, you need to put that down. So like this, say I wanna see this side, and you put down. If I wanna see this side, then I would put this side face down, okay? So I'm gonna bring it, I basically eyeball how to make it even between these two stitches. So this one, the stitch is here and here, and this is about even. If I wanted it this way more, I would just pull this way versus this way. So I just make it kind of even. And then it's going to stitch along this top placement line. So depending on how much of this you want to hang up, if you want it really small, you don't want like a big mount hanging, you pull it closer that way so the loop is a little smaller. If you want a lot of it, say you want it to be a really big one, then you'd pull it further down. So I'm just going to... Get mine set. I think I want mine right about there. Okay. So then the next stitch is just going to go ahead and stitch right here, tacking it down. I'm going to go tack that down and then I'm going to show you how you would have placed this with directional fabric, but I'm just going to get this in place first. Okay, guys, this is what it looks like. I have excess right here, so I'm going to cut some of this off. It did, you don't have to cut it off right now. It will cut off when we do the whole outside as well, but I'm just cutting it off now. But you can see now it will flip up in the end, and that's what will hook onto our holder thing, okay? So now what we're doing next is our last step. We're going to put the back on, but I'm going to show you how to do this directional fabric real quick. It takes me a minute all the time. So basically I would fold, fold, Let's see if I can fold over. Oh, I have to fold it the other way. You want it to, okay. You want it to be up like that, okay. So you'd basically get it like that. Then you would put it down, see his face? You'd pull it towards you, right sides towards you. And then when it stitches right there, when you pull up, his little moose face would be facing up. Okay, so that's how you would place it. You'd have to do the clean edges and everything, but I just want to show you that real quick. Okay, so we got this, we cleaned that up. Now you need a piece of fabric that's big enough to go over this. I'll just show you what I did. I basically just went like this until I had a big enough piece that goes over all the whole thing. I cut it, I gave it a little bit extra 
down here and here, and I'll show you why. So just make sure then cut across. Then once you have that sheet, I um, have two of them, so I already prepped it, so that's why. So I had a sheet that was that big. Then I ironed it. I don't put anything on it. It's just a piece of woven. Once it's ironed, then I fold it over like this, and I cut across here. Then you'll have two pieces. Once you have two pieces, then I take this edge and fold it in, and that edge and fold it in. So what you end up with is this. You have two pieces, clean edge, another piece clean edge. You don't need two clean edges. You actually only need one. And the one that has the clean edge is the one that goes down first. And then the other one could just go on top without a clean edge because you won't see it. It will fold inside. But um, I iron both down. If you have both ironed down, then you don't have to worry about which one goes first. But um, the clean edge one goes first. So now you just want to make sure that you're getting past all of your placement stitches and that you're about halfway okay so when do that it's right sides down and the folded edges i'm putting on top of each other like that okay now this is kind of um the same with directional fabric you would just make sure that it's facing like this he would be like that all the way down the same direction like one big piece, well, it'd be here and then here, the two pieces, but you would face it like this, okay? So I'm gonna go over the machine, it's gonna stitch our last step and it's gonna go all the way around this several times. Then I'll come back and show you what we're doing next. Okay, we are done. It is completely stitched all the way around. That's at the top of your hoop, but it's bottom. So you can unhoop. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and just cut all the way around here. I'm gonna use these pinking shears. You can use regular scissors if you want. This just kind of turns edges a little better later. It's um, It doesn't have to look good. It's gonna take a little bit because mine aren't that sharp. I might have to go to the other thing. This is like too thick. Let me see. All right, I'm gonna use it with these scissors. I did it on my other ones, so I must have something thicker in here. I wonder what I put thicker. Okay, so I'm just gonna use regular scissors. It'll be fine. If you do use um, the other shears, it just makes it turn a little better, like on the edges. They'll be a little crisper probably. Okay. I'm not gonna fight it though. You don't have to cut too close. You don't want the fabric pulling through. Okay. Now we're going to turn through this little hole we made. This is the best part. It's my iron talking to us. I stick my fingers in and turn it. I have vinyl on mine and duck cloth and tear away. So, or not tear away, cut away. So mine's a little thicker. So I'm gonna use this just to get my corners out really well. Okay. Trying to get them out as good as I can without poking through it. It'd be bad if it went all the way through, then you'd have a big hole in here and you have to glue it somehow. Okay. I know I'm off camera. I'm just poking this through like this. Not doing anything that interesting. Okay, then I would iron it to get it all smooth, but watch out there. I we have I have vinyl on this front, so I would not iron on the vinyl. That would be bad. So you just get it smoothed out and iron from this side. Okay. Now there's some different ways you can close this. This is your hole. You can close it with um, glue. I'll show you some different ones. Glue. This is fabric glue. You can use the double-sided fabric tape. I think they have a they have a thing for you. 
sorry, they're all in this. Just peel and stick tape this. I'm just trying to get you the brands. Um, the other thing you can do is you can use this hem tape. This is like fusible bonding web stuff. It's like hem tape. I know um, Jen from Parker on the Porch who makes these designs, she uses like a, I think a heat and bond light one. So you can just like measure this out. I was going to use this one. Oops. It's really thin. She probably uses a thicker one all the way there. Okay. And then you just, I'm going to iron it first to get it smooth, but then you just go ahead and put this in here along the edge. Once you get it all lined up, then put that there and then you iron it and the heat adheres it together. The glue is self-explanatory. I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show you the ending. Okay guys, this is what it looks like. Here's our front that we made. Super cute. Here's the back. It's closed. That's what it looks like. Okay, now you can put it on these stands. I know I'm too close. Let me put it up a little bit and see. You can see a little better. We have these stands. Okay, I'm going to put it on this real quick and then I'll show you another way you can do it. This actually is the winter wonderland one. Super cute. This is where we took the background quilting from and um, super cute. So I'm going to put it on here and then I'll show you. So you have an opening right here and it just slides on. Okay. Remember, this one is the 8 by 12. That is what it looks like. Let's go back more. Doop. Super cute. If you don't have one of these stands, they're, they're not expensive. You can get them um, on Amazon and I'll show you Jen links all her stuff. The other thing you could do is if you didn't want to put it on a stand, you could put a ribbon through that. You can still make it for the stand. See, there's a little hole here, but if you put ribbon, you could also hook this on things. It could be a door thing. It could be anything you want. So these are super cute and you can use them a bunch of different ways, but, um, that is how you make it and how you hack it and different things you can do with it. Now I'm going to bring you over to the website and show you some different things about it. Okay, if you go to the Parker on the Porch page, which is where I am, you can see there is a cake tree applique. We did not use the applique. You can see that this one's different. This one has stitching in it and it is a little different, but if you wanted to just merge the applique, it would make, it is a lot easier. You don't have to stop. There's actual placement stitches and stuff like that. So just know that the applique does exist right here, the, the cake tree applique. Okay, there's lots of different stuff that goes with it. Super cute things that you can do. Now, you can see that the stuffy is not on here yet because it's releasing um, tomorrow. I used it today. So I wanted to actually go to the mini quilts because I wanted to show you something. So this is basically, we basically made this Thanksgiving one. Remember we took the Thanksgiving mini quilt base and then we deleted these things from it. And then we took the Winter Wonderland quilting and stars, or the, not stars, snowflakes and the little dots from this design right here, the Winter Wonderland one. And then I took the stuffy. So we merged those three together. But I did want to show you, if you go in to this mini quilt, if you go down here, like scroll down here, you read all that stuff. Okay, so it tells you what different ones fit different things, okay? So if you click here, she has links to these stands. So this would be the stand that I have. So you can get the stand right there, okay? So if you go onto the website, if you notice that on a lot of the designs that you do, if you need 
an item like hardware or something that goes with it, she normally has it linked. Okay, so just come over here and look and see if there's links, okay? So I just wanted to show you that's how you can get those stands, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, let me know if you have any questions, if I confused you in any way, and just know that you could use just the applique. We hacked it a different way, but let me bring it back up. You could use this straight, the applique. It just looks a little different than the um, stuffy that we used, okay? Have a good day. Hope you enjoyed this.